Hello, hi, and welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. These are going to be general messages for the sign of Aquarius in June 2019. Hello, Aquarius. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing well. All right, Aquarius, here we are, June 2019, halfway mark through the year. Let's go. I don't know why I'm in such a rush to get out of 2019, but it's been, like, in my energy for the past few weeks. I'm, like, so over 2019 already. But maybe I'm just, like, eager to, like, get onto something new. I don't know. Anyway, that's enough about me. Here's here's what's going on with you. <laughs> I've shuffled off camera. That's your main spread there. What I will do now is shuffle for your outcome and your overall energy. Once all the cards are out and they're lying face up on the table, that's when the reading begins. You can look in the times. Oh, excuse me. You can look in the description box below if you want to uh, use the timestamp. That's totally fine. That's why I put it down there. If you want to jump ahead, I totally understand. Also down there is all the information you need if you want to get a personal reading with me. Uh, I've announced over the past month and a half or two months or so uh, that I was going to expand what I offered on the channel. So now you'll see three different uh, lengths and setups for readings that I offer. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, I think. But if there's any questions that you do have uh, before you place an order, you can feel free to email me at the same email address and I will promptly answer your question. Okay. Uh, anything else? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I've announced it in all the videos uh, for the month. A good uh, client of mine and a wonderful subscriber, Vanessa, made me this bracelet. Uh, she sent it to me in the mail, so I just wanted to shout her out and give her thanks to all of my viewers because, I don't know, I just think it's like a thing to do. Like, if someone sends you a gift, it's not like bragging or anything, but it's just like, I just want to show that people are nice <laughs> and, uh, I don't know it's just a thing I don't know why I'm like doing that because like I could have just done it in the video for her sign but I was just like everybody should know like I have clients that are really cool and like make me stuff I think that's really neat and I mean you know I don't know I don't know why I have to explain this but for like two milliseconds it felt weird to me like someone out there is just like why are you telling us this <laughs> Anyway, um, so yes, thank you, Vanessa, for making me this bracelet. I really, really, really appreciate it, okay? All right, uh, outcome for Aquarius in June 2019. How about it, huh? Let's get an outcome for Aquarius in June 2019. Please show me. <sighs> oh. These are like getting all clunky on me. This was not a clunky shuffle for the off camera portion, but that was just really kind of, yeah, that was weird. Interesting. Bottom of the deck is the overall energy. Oh, Crystal, you're in the way. Why would you get in my way like that? Okay, whoa, stay there. My nails are not growing fast enough. I cut them like a week ago, and I'm still having grasping problems. Anyway, <laughs> let's go to flip these for you, Aquarius, and see what's going on. All right. A few repeat customers here, some repeating energies that I remember from other readings, so that's interesting. Oh, and you're a little crooked, aren't you? Now, how's that look on screen? Oh, that looks lovely, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, guys, let's see what's going on. Please show me Aquarius in June 2019. Please show me where Aquarius is in June 2019. Please show me. All right, cool. All right, guys, so coming into June 2019, you come in with the Five of Swords. Hmm... What's going on, guys? Who are you fighting with? <laughs> what are you fighting about? And, and I would say fighting. It could be arguing. It could be, you know, just heavy, you know, very important discussions. But there is this um, disagreement you might be involved in or some type of tussle, like a tug of war. I mean, it's kind of uh, ind indicated there with that imagery, right? There's a little bit of a tug of war. A little bit of uh, vying for something, trying to control something. Um, ugh. And it's like, uh, you don't have to do this. 
you know? Uh, look at this, look at the card, right? Here's these two guys fighting over this gun as several hands of, well, yeah, that would be five. So five zombies <laughs> are, are, are attempting to attack these two gentlemen, and they're fighting over the one thing that could possibly save them both. Now, by the way, this is the zombie tarot deck. It's a little, I've pointed out that I felt it was a little strange that I was guided to pick this deck for the month, but it has proven to be a really impactful deck thematically because I think a lot of people are coming up against adversarial energy in June. And so it's very, and it's very plain. It's very like us versus them. Like there's no like bullshit about it. There's no like, I don't know who my enemy is. Like in a zombie apocalypse, you know who the enemy is. You know what you're out there trying to defeat zombies. Okay. So the thing about this though is both people know and whether or not you're fighting with one specific person i'm not sure but both in this card both of these gentlemen know the enemy technically is the zombies uh, but they're fighting amongst each other so there's like a misguided energy here and i think i did say the phrase you don't have to do this like, you know, they say that in movies all the time. You don't have to do this. There's another way. And maybe that's true, Aquarius. Maybe you're getting involved in disagreements or maybe you're getting involved in in controversial, interesting, controversial discussions or interactions that you don't have to get involved in. I feel like this is, you know, with the fives, usually the fives are challenges to us, but they're surmountable challenges and they're avoidable. You know, you don't have to engage in this energy if you don't want to. There is another option, but this feels really contentious. And the re and going back to this whole movie, you know, high point of tension, you don't have to do this, Tom. There's another, you know, that high dramatic point in a movie is, I feel that that phrase would fall on deaf ears in your situation, Aquarius, because both of these people, again, you could be... It could be between you and a person, it could be between you and a group, but there's this idea that there are two sides to this and both sides feel unsafe, insecure or un uh, unsafe, not secure, not in their own power if they don't put up a fight. You know, if one of these guys were to, you know, sort of let the other one have the gun, have that gun under the assumption that whoever takes possession of the weapon, they will do the right thing and protect both of them. That would be the assumption. But I don't know about you, but as my mom used to say, don't assume anything because it makes an ass out of you and me, right? So there's this idea or this fear that if you don't put up a fight, this is you thinking this or you, this is the other person thinking this or the other side of the argument, whatever. If I don't put up a fight, if I don't, if I don't try to win this or gain some type of control here, I can't assure my own safety. I would be allowing another person, the other side of whatever situation this is, to take control and protect me, look out for my best interest. And that's just not a risk I'm willing to take. So instead of working together, these two guys, you know, become sort of adversaries in the middle of something that already has a clear line between us and them. You know, we are the good guys, they are the bad guys, or we're on this side of the argument, they're on that side of the argument. So there's like this infighting going on. There's this insular disagreement that's going on around you, Aquarius. Now, I'm not getting anything so far of what this could be, but I feel you feel justified in doing it. You don't have to do it. Like I said, the fives are challenges and they're surmountable, meaning if you do engage in it, if you do participate in this disagreement, this argument, whatever, it, it, it'll pass, you know, but you could, there is another option, which is to not engage at all. But, you know, for the sake of pride, for the sake of uh, worry or fear that you won't be taken care of by somebody else, like they're not going to prioritize your needs and your desires, you stand up for yourself. That's like your mentality or that's the mentality of the other side or the other person, okay? Interesting. Well, oh. and, and there, okay, thank you. Because they're like, there's more to this. The other thing is, there's an insistence here. Like again, these two guys both believe they're doing the right thing. So, so both sides of this 
division are going to say, if you trust me, it'll go the way it's supposed to go. Trust me. Let me have the upper hand or let me have the control or the power here. Give me the gun, Tom, and I'll take care of the both of us. Or give me the damn gun, Steve, and I'll take care of these zombies. And I'll get, you know, both people, you know, both people in this card would be thinking, I can take care of the situation. My route, my, my, my point of, of, of leadership or my idea is the best idea. My, my plan to get us to safety, my plan to defend us is the best plan. Listen to me. Like, you know, and there's, and that would then indicate stubbornness, you know, which is, you know, very possible, you know, Aquarius, you got fixed sign energy about you. Maybe the other person you're dealing with has fixed sign energy about them. And what do I say by that? You yourself, Aquarius, are fixed sign. If you have other placements in your chart that are fixed, you would have a very rigid personality overall, not in all things, not in all cases, but there is this idea with fixed energy that will not compromise on certain things, especially when they believe they're right. And, you know, Aquarius, <laughs> you're, you're a member of the get along gang. You do like to allow people to be who they are because you want people to accept how you are. So you never want to, you know, you never walk around like a tyrant, but when you think what you know is right, or you believe what you believe is is the most logical way or the most practical way or the way that will solve the problem overall or shift things, you just kind of stick to that. And so there is a, a little bit of that there. It's not like the only thing in your mind or the only reason that you're being compelled or you feel compelled to engage in this energy. But it does factor in, you know, you can't help yourself. Same way, you know, a mutable sign couldn't help themselves if they were just like, okay, I'm done with this and walk away. <laughs> anyway, that's just like a little taste of like my understanding of, of astrology and like what I see as pa clear patterns amongst the different uh, qualities or uh, the uh, modalities. All right, Aquarius, I apologize about that. Uh, I realized... I didn't talk too much further after that sudden cut there, but uh, I, I forgot, as I tend to do because I'm getting old, <laughs> I forgot to clear away some files on the camera before I started to record yours, so there was a little hiccup there with space, but now we're back. So you don't even know, like you can't even tell, but there was a little bit of a break here. <laughs> One second, I need water. Okay, guys, so... Sorry, I got some ice there. Um, so as I was saying, before, well, as I was saying, but you don't know what I was saying. There's also this element here that these two guys, they're on the same side. And I, I think I kind of alluded to that before. Um, that, you know, they want the same thing or they're, they're thinking, uh, their consideration is the same. You know, they, they desire the same thing, but they're just coming at it from different angles. You know, one person says uh, tomato, the other one says tomato, you know what I mean? Like, we both want tomatoes on the sandwich, but, you know, when I say it, I just, uh, could you add some sliced tomatoes, please? And the other person says, do you mean sliced tomato? Uh, yeah, sure, sliced tomato. No, tomato. And it's just like, we want the same thing. Let's go ahead and make a damn sandwich with tomato on it. It's totally okay. No, 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 no. I want tomato. It's just like, we are saying the same thing, just with different accents. Who, like, why is this an argument? So it's kind of senseless in a way, you know, it's kind of pointless because again, we both want the same thing, we're both on the same page, or we both both have the same idea, uh, whatever. It's just, it's just kind of silly. We desire it. The same thing. Pride, maybe, is what's in the way here. Pride, that is a, yes, there we go. Traditionally... The Five of Swords is a card about pride and vanity. If you if you're familiar with tarot, this is the card where, uh, in the traditional Rider Waite deck, you have the one guy holding like two or three swords, and then in the distance there are two people walking away from a fight. So there's this idea that someone wants to win at all costs, and somebody just wants to have the upper hand just to have it. There's really no victory in whatever disagreement this is, or whatever battle of wills this is or battle of the minds in, in the case of swords uh air sign energy right 
So there's a pridefulness here. You and someone else or you and a group of people, I don't really know exactly how this is coming about just yet, but there's a pridefulness here. No, ni neither side wants to lose, even though the losing is not truly a loss. Because again, you both want the same damn thing, tomatoes or tomatoes on the sandwich. You know, so let's just go ahead and make this damn sandwich. You know, who cares what we're calling that one ingredient, you know? All right, so what else is going on around you? <sighs> well, right. So you could be, well, like I'm really, uh, or not, okay, fine, fine. Then what is, oh no, my one male is not looking so snazzy there. <laughs> okay. So. I'm not gonna. Okay. Let's clean this up, please, because you're giving me like five million things. Thank you. Yes. Okay, thank you. We got there. I'm sorry, guys. Like, that was a whole bunch of stuff. Because I was really heavily drawn to the the card above, but they just kept, like, saying yes, but eh. And they kept drawing me down. So I'm like, okay, what happens here? So Judgment, right next door. Uh, secondary Major Arcana card for the Scorpio. It took me a second. <laughs> Scorpio. <laughs> uh, fellow fixed sign energy, but, you know. And you might have a Scorpio in your life who is significant, but you don't have to. Uh, but judgment, here we are, you know, looking at this card, that's a hell of a day, huh? Uh, dropping this bomb down on the earth to cleanse it due to that scourge and infestation of the zombies below, right? So there's this idea of finalist, finalistic or fatalistic endings, right? Um, now, the caveat, not the caveat, but the clever thing about this deck is that's the ending of the zombies, to drop a bomb and clear the clear the field basically but also that's a rebirth that's a redo that's a restart for humanity if we can all hunker down get below the surface of the earth drop a bomb clear away all the zombies or you know at least give us a very huge advantage to getting things back on track that is like this option that we have again thematically with this deck with this card so as it applies to your life, Aquarius, I feel you might be trying to clean up something or, or clean a slate, you know, wipe something clean in order to start fresh. Maybe that's what you guys are fighting about or that's kind of your point of contention with someone is I need a fresh start. I need things to be, you know, set back to, to, to zero, back to the starting line so that blah, blah, blah can happen. I don't, I'm not really sure what your end goal would be but there is I think a desire because it's right along you here in your foundation or it's kind of what you might be fighting about maybe you've already done this maybe you've already hit the button dropped the bomb cleared the field and somebody's like what did you just do Aquarius did you just hit the button you know like, yeah I hit the button and maybe that you know again thematically think about it maybe these two guys carrying over into this judgment card energy. They both want to get to eradicate the infestation of zombies. The zombie apocalypse is a thorn in both of these guys' sides. And one of them's like, we need a way to get rid of all the zombies at once. And you're like, yes, I agree. We need a way to get rid of all of them at once. How can we do this? And so the other guy's going on about these other methods. You know, maybe we could do this, maybe we could do that, da 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 And you're like, we could just drop a bomb. We just wipe the slate clean, just like, whew, one fell swoop, they're all dead. And the other guy's just like, eh, you know, we could do that, but I really think we should do something else. I don't know what else you could do to get rid of zombies in one fell swoop, but that other person is thinking of another way. And you're just like, yeah, but like, if we just hit this one button, as you can see in the card, one button, one button that says fire, <laughs> and we can stay inside our safe bunkers by hitting that button, our problems will be over. So maybe that's it, Aquarius. Either you or someone else like did something impulsively, acted quickly, made a decision sort of one-sidedly, or 
whatever, for the sake of the shared common goal of let's get rid of this, let's move past that, let's see if we can find a workaround to that problem, and you're just like, I see a workaround, here's how we do it, and you, boom, hit the button. And now that it's happened, judgment, someone has things to say about it. Now, I'm not sure how far that situation or that discussion needs to go. It might filter back into this Five of Swords disagreement where your methodology, your way of getting the result, Aquarius, has displeased someone or vice versa. Someone else's actions, you're just like, why did you do that? There's a, there's a, there's a questioning of the actions that have been taken. But the result is what everybody wanted it to be or is the result that everybody knew was necessary you know so if you did have to make drastic changes if you did have to end a relationship you know maybe you, you know it, it could be something like that i'm not necessarily sensing that but just as an example to kind of take it away from the theme of zombie land or whatever uh, maybe you were recently in a relationship aquarius where both you and your partner were both thinking whether you expressed it to each other or not but you were both thinking you know what this is not going anywhere i i can't get along with this person anymore we don't want the same things anymore you know maybe it's better that we just kind of end it and the other person may have been thinking that too but you decided to push the button and literally just boom killed it snip we're done whether you're how you said it when you said it verbally on the phone through text through i don't know but the point is you took the initiative, right? Or the other person did, you know, it's, it's general. So apply it as, as, as it, as, uh, it, as it fits. But the, 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 the way in which you did it displeases someone. They still agree. That's for the best. In the end, we were just not going anywhere. This, this, this thing was dead in the water months ago, whatever. But now you're getting flack about your choices. Like, but you didn't have to do it that way. You didn't have to say that. And it's just like, but, but it doesn't matter. We're already here. Who cares what I said? Who cares what I did? The, the, the result is the, the bread and the butter of this thing or the, the meat and potatoes of this thing. And we both agree that was the correct choice. So like, it's weird. People, someone is critiquing or someone feels a little certain type of way about how you got to whatever result you got to. So maybe there's like some moralizing going on. Maybe there is a <laughs> judge, you know, judgment going on. People are judging you, you know, oh, that was tacky or oh, you should never have done it. You shouldn't have said that. And it's just like to you, Aquarius, or to someone else, you're just like, so what? Or, mm, okay, but that's neither here nor there. Why are we talking about that? Because the result is the same. There's no reason for us to discuss what I said or what was done because now we live in a new reality. You know, again, to bring it back to the zombie thing, someone might be butthurt over dropping a bomb and having some nuclear fallout on the Earth's surface. And they're like, why did you do that? Da da da. Now we have to, you know, da da da. And, but you're like, but we got rid of the zombies. That's what everybody wanted. Everybody agreed. We don't want zombies on the earth anymore. And I said, boop, with the button. And now we don't have zombies anymore. What's, what's the deal? What's the hiccup about, my friends? So someone's a, someone is confused about why does it matter how we got here? We're here now. Let's move on. You know? And so bringing it back to this idea of refreshing, restarting, rebirth. Maybe some of you want to go back to something. Maybe some of you want to dig up something or someone from your past and everybody's just like no 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 don't do that no 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 you shouldn't and you're like but you said that person was great for me or you said that i should move back to to dallas because it's such a great place to be yeah but like no i meant like no it's like somebody's agreeing with you one second but then disagreeing the next is how this feels and it's weird and again it's pointless with that five of swords because you know i'm getting like a friendship vibe or like a family member who does have an opinion but who cares who cares like apologize for the neighbor's dog i have the windows up it's a nice day so that's going to be way louder than it normally is so i apologize uh, <laughs> anyway so 
yes, the judgment call, this rebirth, to me, okay, yes, thank you, it's like all about, yeah, we'll get to it, thank you, all right, so, ace of cups on the other side, so again, on your foundational line, what is next to you from that five of swords position, Here we go. Like again, like a brand new start, a new offer, a new opportunity, new possibilities. In terms of cups, we're talking about emotions, perhaps love and relationships for some of you. Not for everybody. Not everybody's here for that. I already feel that. Um, but there's this revitalized energy is more what I'm feeling. Feeling in love with life is maybe what you're looking for. You know, maybe previous to now or sometime recently you have felt really meh about everything. And so now that the bomb has dropped, in whatever way that translates into your life, this bomb drop, this leveling of the playing field, this like whew, act or, or statement that was made that changed everything or reset the pattern or reset the, 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 the table, whatever. I feel you did it or I feel that whoever did it is because they want this new fresher perspective you know I want to see my life I want to see the world through a new pair of eyes I want a new start at something I want another chance at something and I don't see a way to work backwards like okay hmm like there is something here very strongly about doing it the other person's way. Because again, in that Five of Swords, both parties agree, both sides agree that the result is, is what's desired. But one person says, drop a bomb. The other person says, all right, let's just go out there tactically and move like in force, like sort of like a longer process. Maybe that's it. Like somebody has a quicker solution. The other person's solution would have taken months or weeks to, 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 to get a result. And so I feel it's mostly you Aquarius, which is strange because, well, actually it's not. I was gonna say, it's strange because fixed signs are not known for their impulsivity, but fixed signs are known for re <laughs> resolve. Okay, so what do I mean? Impulsivity is like somebody who wants to just drop a bomb like every five seconds on their life in all areas of their life. Like they just want things to be binned off and, and thrown away, you know, all the time, rapidly or, or, or regularly. Yeah. Fixed sign energy Aquarius. I don't think you're that type of impulsive. You're, you're not, you're just not. And if you are fine, <laughs> you know, we're all individuals, you know, we're not owned by our astrology. We're not, you know, <sighs> takes a, <laughs> whatever. What I do feel is that once you've made up your mind to change or to ex to say, I no longer accept this in my life, I no longer accept this type of situation, this type of relationship, this type of mindset, this type of behavior, no longer acceptable. Then we get to quick impulses. That's when the fixed signs turn it on. Once it's decided, it's decided. And we act immediately, immediately. It's not a slow change. It's not a warm up to the change. It's like, did I change my mind about this? I have? Okay, then I'm done doing that ever again. And boom, it's over. So that's what I'm feeling. And now that that has happened, this is on the other side for you. This is what you, this is sort of the motivation to why you're being so resolute, why you're being so staunch and very stern about yes I dropped the bomb so the fuck what <laughs> because I wanted something new I wanted to feel as if I had a new set of eyes to see my world with so some of you up and quit a job up and quit a relationship up and quit bad behaviors or or addictive per uh, behaviors cold turkey just like snip no more of that and people were like, oh, Aquarius, you've changed. And you're like, you're fucking right I did change because that's all, that, that was the point of this thing. 
you said that that job was, you know, no good for me or like I was stressing myself out too much. So I went in there and I quit. And everybody's like, but Aquarius, no. And you're like, don't worry about it. I got this. You know, the, I do feel there's a sense of don't worry about it. It's a little messy now that I'm no longer getting up and going to work every day. That's a little strange. You know, and this could be like a fight between you, you and your uh, partners, you and your parents, you and your roommates, whoever looks at your at your life from their perspective and sees, well, even though you're miserable doing what you were doing, it's better to have a steady paycheck. Even though you're miserable in that relationship, it's better than being single. And you're like, no, it's not really. It's not. Not for me. No, it's not. Uh-uh. So we quit that. We're done with that. And now we have this brand new offer that I feel actually in a very like sentimental kind of sappy way. This is an offer that you make to yourself, Aquarius, maybe a promise that you make to yourself going forward. I'm never going to work in a corporate situation again. I hate that type of living. I'm going to transfer my, my skill set into, uh, you know, the social services, something like that. You're, you're just like, there is a new change upon me. And I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to embrace it. You know, I mean, as, as serene as a headless person can look, she looks pretty damn serene. So there's like an, a relief I feel is going on for you, Aquarius. And other people are just like confounded with it. They don't understand. They don't understand how you acting kind of harshly or quickly or you know, impulsively back here with the judgment card, how that equals some sense of freedom or some sense of goodness. Because again, if you drop a bomb on the earth just to eradicate a bunch of zombies, yes, that solves the problem today, but there's a whole bunch of fallout afterwards that we have to work, work with. And that could be an honest concern that if you did quit something suddenly, if you moved away from your apartment suddenly, let's just take that as an example. Some people, I've, I've done that. <laughs> leave an apartment quickly, no notice. Like leaving people in the lurch. I, I did that once. I, I'm going to be honest. I did do that. I moved out quickly. I did not pay the next month rent. I left people on the hook. I was a different person like 10 years ago. Anyway, so maybe you've done that. You know, for you that works out. But for the other person, it's just like, I'm left holding the bag. I'm left holding uh, this this burden here I can't afford this house without you and you're like moving into your one bedroom apartment by yourself and you're just like okay so there is a little bit of that where it might solve a problem for you in the here and now but it might affect other people and and ripple out in their lives in unexpected ways or inconvenient ways and I feel like you're just like so what about it <laughs> if I'm honest so, okay, what else is going on? So, yes, here we, thank you. Now it makes sense because we're doing sort of, well, I think this is pretty much your reading here in the bottom. I think what's going on in the top line is sort of the background of everything, the history of the situation. What, what has caused Aquarius to up and move, up and quit, up and dump, whatever you've done, just like, boom, it's over. Whatever you've done it. And again, it does, even though I'm saying it's up and over or, or whatever you've done has ended something, I think that is true, but I think it was in the interest of restarting as well. And that makes sense. Sometimes you have to end something in order to get a do-over or to start again. You have to end something to start again. You know, does that, I, I think that makes sense to you. As the outsider, I'm just like, it's not fully connecting with me, but I think that really speaks to you guys to to get a, to, 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 to be able to start again, I have to end something, okay? So, contextually, what happened was, what had happened was, <laughs> you, yes, you stopped believing in it. Here we go. That's why we're here. Because I was like, I was really drawn to this before. Hierophant in reverse. Major Arcana card for Taurus. I'll show you upright. You do not have to be dealing with a Taurus, but, you know... It's for those who want to know and for those who want that confirmation. So Hierophant in reverse. Listen, Hierophant is a very powerful card, okay? It's, it, it speaks to a lot of different 
uh, entities in our lives, you know, media, government, schools, all that kind of stuff. These entities with power, religion, these entities that really shape people's everyday lives, you know, much like you can see here with the boob tube, the old, the old fashioned boob tube. Okay. And I mean, think about that now. Think of all the sources of media that surround us now. I think a lot of people would like to think they're free thinking and that they are not influenced by media, but as somebody who studied media and as somebody who knows how I'm influenced, it's just like, no, that's not true. You cannot avoid it. There is always going to be influence. So in the reverse is a turn away from that or a turn down of that or a rejection of it outright. In other ways, it's a, okay, thank you, there we go. I'm not gonna say that here because I don't feel it was that because we don't have other cards that indicate it, but oftentimes also the Hierophant can represent marriage or some type of uh, holy union, right? Uh, I'm not gonna say, I mean, some of you could have been married and now you're no longer married or you're now, you know, going through the process of becoming divorced. But there is this idea of being committed to something and now you're not committed to it. Okay, so there's a severing of a committed tie. There's a severing of a union, all right, for some of you. And that could just, like I said, kind of cavalierly as I was speaking earlier, could just be a breakup, a, 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 an up and dump. <laughs> okay, I'm up and dumping you. We're done, <laughs> you know. And some of you might come at it with that attitude, like, you know, this is over. Very, very nonchalant. Oof. Which can be offensive to somebody. Like I said, someone might have a issue with how they were dumped. Not that they disagree that the dumping was necessary. It's just like, did you have to say that? And you're like, eh, you know, well, we got, we're here anyway. So what does it matter now? Like, why are you arguing about something that's already been done? <laughs> so, but what was I saying? Oh, right. So we turn away from belief, right? Because the Hierophant does represent these entities that, that shape belief and, and, and inform people of their convictions, you know. Uh, and there's like a rejection of this, you know. I think some of you, well, this is like your bread and butter. Why am I saying that so much? Maybe I'm hungry. Um, but for you, Aquarius, belief and like self i a clear sense of identity is very important to you. A clear sense of who you are and all your flaws, all your uniqueness, all your glory, right? Warts and all, as, as the British like to say. Warts and all <laughs> is like, that's your thing. I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be perfect. But when we come to the Hierophant, there is sometimes this influence or this idea that there are strict lines of what is good and what is bad and you're like eh, no. life is more of a gray area my friend and I think some of you are kind of emphasizing that or really like doubling down on that uh sentiment I'm not I'm not an angel I never claim to be and so I feel you're rejecting someone's perception of you or you're rejecting this expectation of having to do things a certain way of having to behave a certain way of having to follow sort of a pattern that's, you see, there we go. Uh, Hierophant talks about prescribed ways of living, rules and regulations. Aquarius, that is not you. You don't like that. Rules and regulation, that's for the birds, okay? That's, that's bullshit. It's not applicable in all cases. It's not applicable in every moment of your life. Absolutely not. Aquarius leaves room for the exceptions, leaves room for the gray area, okay? So here we go. You have developed into this recently, or this has become sort of a focal point as it's right directly above your starting position. It has become a focal point in your mind. I'm not doing things for the sake of doing them because that's what the playbook says. I'm not going to do them because that's what the rules say. That's what people expect of me. That's what you, you know, it's just like, I'm no longer interested in doing what is expected of me in this regard, the relationship, the job, the behavior. You know, some of you may be are rebelling against people's perception that you're a failure or that, you know, this is like for just a few of you. And this is a very serious situation. I'm not seeing it too heavily here, but I'm more conceptualizing it or, or feeling it's more of a loose concept. I'm feeling like someone is, is, is where people f have felt 
that you have some type of addiction or some type of ailment, like mental, like they think it's a sickness or something. Yeah. Hierophant can include like hospitals and, and, and the medical field. So some, you, maybe you've been diagnosed with something and you're like, eh, no, that's not true. Or I'm not going to live my life that way because people think someone who's, who is diagnosed as this behaves this way. Like you're, you're really upsetting the norms here with this energy. Okay. And it's not for the sake of being a rebel. It's not for the sake of just being contrary. It's like, no. I'm, I'm letting you know that might be my diagnosis or that might be my job, but that doesn't define me. It's not all that I am. And you expect me to be this way because on the page it says Aquarius is diagnosed as blah, 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 blah. Therefore, I can't do blah, 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 blah. And you're like, no, that's bullshit. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to, I'm going to show you or show myself. A lot of it is self-contained energy for you Aquarius you're proving it to yourself and other people just happen to be watching so good for them they're learning a lesson too or they're able to see how you're growing as well good for them <laughs> but it's it's really like this <sighs> turning away from expectations and it's like a revolutionary act that you're holding within yourself primarily you know that relationship maybe you guys were together for like 10 years or something you're married or you know you weren't married but you know common law marriage like you just people people assume that that's just the you guys are together forever sorry that's not true we were never married and i'm free to leave you know we both wanted it to end anyway you know so there's like this whole it's a lot of things that you're considering not, no, I shouldn't say considering, but there's a lot going on here, you know, because I feel you're all this motivation, everything I've talked about, the motivation has been from a self-focused point of view. What's in my best interest? We talked about that extensively there in the Five of Swords, right? What's in my best interest? What's my goal? And I think you're having a little bit of blowback from people outside of you and you're just like... You don't live my life, my friend. You don't live my life, mom. You don't live my life, uh, former boss. You don't know what I need. I know what I need. I know what I have to do, and I'm going to do it. Okay? Wow. I know what I need, and I know what I'm doing. What did I just say? I know what I need, and I know what I'm doing? Absolutely. We made a decision. Right above that judgment card. We have made this decision to drop the bomb. Two of Wands usually indicates having to make a choice usually indicates having to go left or right you know what what uh what steps to take what actions are we going to 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 step forward with and maybe this is upcoming for some of you you know everybody's on a different path everybody's on a different timeline some some of you have already done this you've already pushed the button the bomb has dropped you know case or sera <laughs> others of you you haven't made that decision yet or you haven't actually taken that step you know taken that action just yet but here we are you're going to and some might you know choose not to drop the bomb some of you may hold yourselves back from making this sort of flip of the switch uh decision or this flip of the switch uh, uh change in your life that's fine but it's the path as you can see with this card the paths are pretty well defined you know both of these guys are going to encounter that obstacle of an oversized zombie, right? But one has a left, a, a path on the left, the other has a path on the right. Like, the choices are very clear. And that's the thing about the Two of Wands, is amongst the other twos, where I think the Two of Swords is a lot more confused, I think the Two of Pentacles tends to be pretty confused, the Two of Cups isn't, is a little clearer, but I think this Two of Wands in this deck, in this instance, is like super clear left or right and you it's it's not like you're spending much time really analyzing anything because again it comes up it comes right across excuse me it comes above that pushing of the button that it, that's here in the judgment so both of these cards indicate the decision is made you can't go back once you press that button you can't go back once you choose this path you can't go back right 
again, like the faint path lines or the, the, the route markers or whatever that are on the ground there that show you the history of how these two guys were walking or moving. It's like, well, and then what would be the point? There's no point in going back because you would encounter that huge obstacle. You would encounter that huge overbearing and quite grotesque zombie. So you can't go back. Once the decision is made, that's it. You know? Move forward. Now, some of you are like, but you talked about things being restarted back here. <sighs> it's like a complex, not complex, it's kind of a weird thing. Hmm. How can I say that? I mean, I mean, that would be it. For those who like ended something to start something again, right? Let's say in a relationship, because I think that's kind of like one of the easier ways to understand something. If you've ended your singlehood in order to go back to someone that you've dated previously, and I'm saying there's no going back with that two of wands, like the decision is pretty clear, the pathway is clear, what would be the point of going back? Because, thank you. The thing that you would go back to if you left singlehood to pursue someone that you used to date, you were miserable while you were single, or you weren't happy, or maybe you were in another relationship and you weren't happy there. So me saying there's no going back applies to that this, the decision that you've made to go back. I, that sounds really weird, but I hope you're able to follow me. The decision to go back is not... I think you get it. I don't know why they want me to focus on this. Maybe some of you are not following me, and I apologize, but play it back. Maybe ask someone else to clear this up for you but it's just like it makes sense to me when I say you can't go back even though some of you are making a decision to go back okay <laughs> because the thing that you did previous to your decision to go back was not satisfactory you know even in a job I hate that job it was secure give me money so I, I can't go back to it so I go back to another job I had which is better for me in the in the interim so again like maybe you worked in a corporate office and you hated it I can't go back to that one but I can go back to my job volunteering or working at the animal shelter you know what I mean I don't know why I'm stuck on this because it makes sense to me but someone out there I'm assuming is stuck on what I just said I hope it makes sense to you like choice a let's just simplify it. choice a I don't like choice a I don't want to go back to it so choice a is done but I do want to go back to choice B so I'm telling you you can go back to choice B and you'll be better off for it or you'll feel better about it or whatever and you've been to B before B is known to you same way A is known to you. You're not going back to A, you're going back to B. I don't know who the hell, no offense, who was confused. I hope that clears it up. I tried to explain it three, three ways. Let's move on. Three of Wands. Oh, okay. So, yes. So we go back. We get that redo. We get that refresh. We get that restart. From an emotional standpoint, I need to be happier. I need to be more contented. I need to feel fulfilled, right? I can work that job. It's easy. It gave me money. I had a nice, you know, insurance policy, everything. Had a lot, had all the checks that you need of a secure job in this modern world. But on the inside, I was dead. On the inside, I was not happy. Now that I've gone back to work at the animal shelter, now that I've gone back to working in social services, now that I've gone back to doing sales, which is more exciting for me, da 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 da. I'm building towards something. Three of Wands. I'm as es I'm escalating or ascending, I should say. I'm building up to something. Now that I'm no longer with that person that I was with before, where yeah, it was stable and secure, blah 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 blah. blah but we weren't emotionally making each other happy. Now I'm back with my ex from five years ago, you know, 15 years ago, whatever. And now I feel happier again. 
And now I'm ready to build, 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 structure, structure, stru structure. I don't know why I'm saying structure, 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 but that means something to somebody. Oh, and it's not my life, so I can't really make 100% sense of that because subjectively, I, at this point in my life, structure or, or, or security is very important. But for some of you Aquariuses, you're just like, no, happiness is more important right now. And that happens. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I don't understand that. But for me personally, in this moment, oh no, we got to, we got to have security, my friends. <laughs> but you're just like, no, I need to be happy. And so once you have that opportunity in front of you, once you kind of make that offer or the offer comes to you, whether again, it's in the form of a job, a form of, uh, you know, having a date with someone you used to know or forming a new relationship. I don't know what it is. Once that happens, we get to building. We get back towards working fer feverishly towards something. There's like a ignition here. There's like a takeoff here, a blast off, like poof, rockets into the sky for you. Potential, you, you see what, hmm. And you see what you want and you see a way to get more of what you want. All right. And for someone in your life, Aquarius, it doesn't make a lick of sense. It really doesn't. For someone else, Aquarius, it's just like super confusing. You know, how could you leave that job where you made blah, blah, blah a year and you had benefits and da, da, da. And now you work at the shelter part-time and they pay you like a dollar above minimum wage that's not feasible and you're like but I love working with animals and I'm happier and to somebody else like they're really concerned you can't live off of happiness Aquarius don't tell an Aquarius that by the way don't 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 challenge don't challenge an Aquarius in that sense you can't live off of happiness. Happiness doesn't pay the bills. Contentment doesn't pay for your student loans. You're like, it will. So there's like this confidence you have in the decision that you've made, even if it's left other people in a panic, even if it's not looking like the correct choice in other people's eyes. And you might have your own self-doubt. You're a human for God's sakes. You know, and, we, and it is, both of these things are connected to that higher fat which does talk about belief. So everybody's telling you, you can't leave a stable job. You can't leave a stable relationship. You need it, you need it, you need it. In the back of your mind, there is still a part of you that says, damn, they might be right. Oof. You know, that article in the New York Times where it says millennials are gonna be suffering financially, da 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 da. I was crazy to leave that job. That thing paid me 65 grand a year. Was I, was I, was that a smart move? So there's some of you will experience that doubt, but ultimately I feel you shouldn't worry about it because you were so unhappy previous. You were in a point of contention previously. You were ready and willing and able. You had decided and you knew exactly you needed a flip of the switch. You needed drastic change. Like, you know, and that happens guys. Maybe I'm, I'm needing to give you some affirmation. Maybe I'm needing to, to give you some support. But that happens, you know, where sometimes our material needs, the money, the security, the, 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 uh, the security of having a roof over our head and food coming in to our bellies and all that kind of stuff. That has importance, yes. But there are other times in life where the emotional contentment, the emotional satisfaction, the emotional stability and security and love, Ace of Cups, is important as well. And I think you're in that phase right now, Aquarius, where that is more important than anything to do with your with your physical 3D, you know, day-to-day -day, real life security. All right? Oh, we got there. Outcome, Six of Wands. Now, traditionally, this is a card of victory, as the card says in its biggest letters, victorious. <laughs> so I forget who this came out for. It might have been 
Leo. I think it was Leo. Yeah. Last week or something like that. Now, the biggest words on this card are victory. is victorious. But if you read fully the headlines. Mm, it's not so nice. The undead are victorious. Down there by my, my fingertip. You're on your own. <laughs> it's official. You know, so it in terms of theme, this card, based on all of its words, would say that the zombies win. That humanity is done for, right? So why 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 am I being drawn to this? Yes. Okay, so choosing your focus. Thank you. If you choose. Why am I playing with the card like this? I don't know. If you choose to look at things a certain way, it will look like you've done the wrong thing. It will look like you've made the wrong decision. If you look at things from another angle, you've made the best decision. You've made the wisest decision. So this idea or this, this, this concept of victory, of feeling as if you've won, feeling as if you have put yourself on the correct path, that's all down to how you see it. Now, we're going to get into some, not even, but it's a very real thing that I think a lot of people would panic about. If you did leave a job that paid very well, that gave you the ability to take care of yourself, keep, keep your rent down or keep your rent paid, keep all of your bills in, 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 in check and in order, and now you take a job that pays you much less, to some other people, or even to yourself, that looks like a, a loss. And you're like, no, it just means I have to start living a different way. You know? So to someone else, it looks like, oh, you're making less money, you're less successful, so you must be miserable. And you're like, no, I'm not. I went from making 65 grand a year to, to, to 30 grand a year. So what? I can live off of that. I can cut down on my bills. I can cut down on my expenses. I can, you know, close out my credit cards. You know what I mean? Some of you might be doing like those very hectic, very, very drastic life changes. You know, it, I think it's still kind of like a buzz, but, you know, simplified living, that's a real thing for a lot of people. I don't have internet. I don't live in a place where I pay an electricity bill. I installed solar panels so any electricity that i have comes from the sun you know I, you know tiny houses some of you might be doing that downgrading yourself not downgrading but downsizing downsizing excuse me downsizing downsizing your living space i sold my car that gave me you know an extra six grand that i can live on to supplement what i'm losing from my big time paying job blah 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 like to someone else, or maybe to some of you, like that little voice inside of your head, it's a huge risk. Why would you do that? You're not going to win. The undead are victorious. And you're like, no, bitch, I'm victorious. You know why? Because I'm happier. I have less responsibilities. I have less stress. You know? Leaving a 10-year relationship or however long relationship that was stable, that was secure where it looked on paper like you guys were happy that you were on your, on that trajectory with that hierophant in reverse. You were on that pathway towards marriage, on that pathway towards happy family, having kids, you know, growing up in suburbia, doing all that shit that everybody believes, for the most part, is the key to happiness. And you're like, no, I'm living alone. And people are like, oh, Aquarius, are you okay? Oh, no. Oh, you know, well, maybe, you know, maybe she'll take you back or maybe he'll take you back. Fuck all that. I'm fine by myself. Like, people think, like, singlehood is like a death sentence. You know? Nobody wants to be an old maid. Nobody wants to be that old guy at the bar, you know, trying to hit on young women. Like, everybody thinks, like, that's doom to your social life, to your, to your own personal happiness. Aquarius, some of you are just like, I'm so single and I'm so fucking happy. It's the best thing I've ever done. But somewhere along the way... People are like, oh, you made a bad decision. You're like, I made the best decision. You can shut up. <laughs> okay. And your overall energy, you have six of hazards, a.k.a. six of pentacles uh, in this deck. Pentacles are hazards. So. 
working smarter, not harder, right? So we've talked a lot, especially now in that in that outcome, but I talked about it a little bit earlier about this whole idea of, you know, going with the flow and sort of doing things of, of a prescribed nature. And like that is sort of the norm and people expect that of you or of everybody. And you're like, no, that's not normal. So with the Six of Pentacles or the Six of Hazards, we care about balance. We care about things being even, 50-50, even keel, or, 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 or uh, things being reciprocated, I should say. Smarter, not harder. Not overdoing it, not overselling it, not overexerting yourself, not overspending. Maybe that's it, you know? Maybe some of you with that well-paying job or well-paid job, you spent more money on shit you know you didn't need, on things you knew you didn't want. And now you've come to a point in your life where you realize, I can do with less. I can make do with less and be much happier. So there's this idea of recalibrating that in terms of hazards, in terms of pentacles, that's straight up interested in your money. Straight up interested in how you live in this world, what you spend your money on, how what you consume in your body in terms of food. Some of you, you know, like I said, drastic change, hit the button. Some of you going vegan or something, going vegetarian. You know, if you look at it, that kind of makes sense. I'm putting the steak that I bought myself last week, I'm going to put that on the line. I'm going to get the zombie to tend to my garden you know what I mean? Like, I'm not using that old method anymore. I'm not putting processed food in my body. I'm not putting meat into my body anymore. That's for someone else. Zombies. Okay? And that's not a judgment. I, I'm not a vegetarian, so I'm not, I'm not knocking anybody who eats meat. But, like, that might be some of your perspectives. I will let other people, let other beings consume that shit. And I'm going to put into my body something that's healthier, something that's better for me. Maybe some of you have had a conscious or a, 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 you haven't done it necessarily for health reasons, but you've done it because of your conscience. I can't ethically consume these products anymore. So to do the little that I can to sort of even the scales, I'm going to stop buying these, these products. I'm going to stop eating that, that food. It's a crisis. I think it's a crisis. Some people believe this. It's a crisis, and and they would be right. It is a crisis. You know, it is it is quite a it is quite a thing. The food industries across the world. It's to feed all these people. Oof, oof. The things that the things that hum humans do in order to feed themselves. It's crazy. And so some of you are just like, I can't be a part of that brutalization. I can't be a part of that. I gotta live simply. So I'm I'm cutting back on this. And so I've changed my behavior. I've changed how I, what I put out into the world. A lot of you are coming at it from that, from that aspect. I can't say I'm support animal rights, but then I still consume animal products. That doesn't make sense. So now I'm trying to even the scales here. If I'm going to say I believe in animal rights, I'm going to say I'm an advocate for, 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 for endangered species and I'm, a, I'm, I'm an advocate for the ethical treatment of animals, it doesn't make sense for me to continue to consume you know, animal products. All right. <sighs> I hope that makes sense. Like I went heavy on that analogy at the end there. It's like pretty much in my face with the illustration, but I hope that makes sense to you in other areas. Cause not everybody here is going vegan or going vegetarian or anything like that. <sighs> All right, Aquarius, we got there. That is your reading for June. If you liked it, go ahead and hit the like button for me. I would appreciate it. Uh, if you want to leave a comment, letting me know how this resonates in, in your life. I would love to read that as well. Uh, you can also share this video across your social media platforms. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed, guys. Uh, we are moving towards an incredible goal here. So more subscribers equals more goal. And uh, yeah, I like that. I'm devising a way. I sort of thought about it last night. I'm going to devise a way to sort of give back to people who have supported me. So once I hit that particular goal, I'll let you guys know. And then we'll be giving some stuff away. Most likely readings. Um, maybe, maybe something else, but most likely we can still give away. Anyway. All right, Aquarius, I thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. Take care.